We thank the Lord for the privilege of sharing another Way of Truth broadcast with you. This broadcast service originates in the radio studios of the Church of God in Hagerstown, Maryland, and this is Alvin A. Craig speaking. Wherever you are listening to our international broadcast, we welcome you, we invite you to stay with us. It is sad that some people teach that you cannot know that you are saved. But this song speaks about an experience of salvation, and not only about an experience of salvation, but a knowledge that when you are saved, God writes your name in his church book. Yes, God has a church book, and in the scriptures it is called the Lamb's Book of Life. How good it is to know. Your sins are forgiven, and your name is written in the book of life. Jesus told the seventy when they came back rejoicing that spirits were subject unto them. He said, don't rejoice because of that. Rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And it wasn't just for the seventy to know that. We can all know that. When the Lord says us, he writes our name in the Lamb's book of life. And as long as we live in obedience to his word, it will remain there. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for all of your rich blessings to us. We thank you for the privilege of sharing the gospel with this precious congregation today. And we're trusting the Holy Spirit will accompany our broadcast and make it a blessing to each one. Doubtless there are those that have burdens and cares and concerns, and we know that you are concerned for them. And so we're asking you to minister to our congregation, continue to be with us in this service. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Our subject for today's broadcast, What Do You Look For in a Church? I'll read one verse of Scripture from Revelation chapter 21 and verse 9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. Now, as we read on in this 21st chapter of Revelation, there is a description of a city given. And some people want you to believe that that's talking about a literal city that will come down out of heaven during what they call the millennial reign. But the angel did not tell John a lie. John was told that he would be shown the bride, the Lamb's wife. And the bride, the Lamb's wife, is the church. The church that Jesus Christ purchased with his own blood. So what do you look for in a church? Christians have an obligation to assemble with other Christians in worship. This is made very clear in the book of Hebrews, In the 10th chapter, verses 24 and 25, where we are told that we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. So Christians, and I speak of Christians, have an obligation to assemble with other Christians. Does it make any difference where we worship? Some people may like a large congregation. Some may prefer a small one. And some people may want one where they have all kinds of programs, year-around sports programs and such like. But let us consider what we should really look for when we look for a place to worship. We should look for a place and we should look for a people where the gospel of Christ is proclaimed. Well, don't all churches proclaim the gospel? Well, If all churches proclaimed the pure gospel of Jesus Christ, we would not have the division and the confusion that we have in the religious world today. For the Scriptures tell us that God is not the author of confusion. And Jesus Christ prayed in John 17 that all of His followers should be one, even as He and the Father are one. So if the gospel was truly proclaimed in all churches, we would not have all these various denominations and confusion and strife that we have in the religious world. One of the reasons why Jesus prayed that we all be one was so that the world would believe that the Father had sent Him. And Satan, knowing that, has done done his utmost to divide and scatter so that people would not believe. Now, when it comes to the matter of the gospel, the preaching or the failure to preach the gospel is not something new in the 21st century. The Apostle Paul faced that even in his day. As we read in... Galatians chapter 1, verse 6, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another or a different gospel, which is not another in reality, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert or change the gospel of Christ. So the apostle Paul faced those who changed the gospel And it has been changed down through the ages. And possibly we have more confusion in the religious world today than ever before. So I would have to say that not every church proclaims the gospel. For again, the gospel would not divide, it would not confuse, it would not scatter. The Apostle Paul said the gospel is the power of God and salvation to everyone that believeth. And there are religious organizations today calling themselves Christians who do not even believe in salvation. They don't teach salvation. 
so they are not teaching the gospel. The church is not a social club. I repeat, the church is not a social club, but it is the body of Christ in which Christians are where Christ is the head. Paul tells us this in Ephesians, the first chapter, the 22nd and 23rd verses, and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Christ purchased the church with his own blood. Paul said in Acts 20 and 28, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and unto all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Paul also tells us in Colossians 1 and 18 that Christ is the head of the body, the church. So the church is not a social club. It's not a place where you have a lot of games and a lot of gossip going on, but it is the body of Christ. And the body of Christ is made up of all true born-again Christians. Now let us consider how Christ is building His church. Yes, Christ has a church, and He is still building it. He calls us through the gospel. He calls us through the gospel. Whereunto He called you by our gospel, to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we read in Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 14. It pleased God, we read in 1 Corinthians 1 and 21, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. And so Christ is building His church through the preaching of the gospel. It pleased God through the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. As we heed the preaching of the gospel and are saved, the Lord adds us to His church. We read in Acts 2 and 47, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those that were being saved. You do not join God's church. The only way into His church is by being born again. Christ said in regard to the sheepfold, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. If I might say so without causing offense, any church that you can join is not God's church, for you cannot join His church. Except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So as we heed the preaching of the gospel and are saved, the Lord adds us to His church and He writes our name in the Lamb's Book of Life, which is His church book. And it's the only church book that will be at the judgment bar of God. A church with a perverted gospel may have very nice, friendly people. Notice what I say now. A church with a perverted gospel may have very nice, very friendly people who will do anything they can to help one another, but they are still unregenerated. Friendship is one thing. Fellowship is another. And when we look for a place to worship and for a people to worship with, we're looking for people not just to have friends, but to have fellowship. John said, I'm writing these things unto you so that you may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. The only way that individuals can have true Christian fellowship with one another is to have fellowship with God. Yes, fellowship begins with God, with a born-again experience. And when you have fellowship with God, then you have, should have fellowship with those who also have fellowship with God. So when you're looking for a place to worship, you're looking for not just friendship, but you're looking for fellowship. 
You're looking for people who have a born-again experience, who have fellowship with God, and have fellowship one with another. But I say a church with a perverted gospel may have very nice, very friendly people, but still be unregenerated. Now, where the apostles' doctrine is observed, that's a place we should seek to find and meet with people who observe the teachings of the Word of God. Jesus instructed the apostles, Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe, and that is to do, to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And so when we look for a place and for a people to worship with, we should look for a people who are observing, who are obeying the teachings of Christ, the teachings of the apostles. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. Now, this is what the early church did. They obeyed the instructions that Christ gave them. Then they that gladly received His word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Now, this is talking about the day of Pentecost and the beautiful sermon, the powerful sermon that Peter preached there. And it says, Then they that gladly received his word. Not everyone that heard Peter preach received it. But those who gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them, unto the church, 3,000 souls. Now notice this. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. They did not divide off into various sects and different creeds. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And we still have that same teaching, that same doctrine today, found in the Word of God. Not in sectarian creeds, but in the Word of God. Such a church will worship in spirit and in truth. Remember Jesus speaking to the woman there at the well of Samaria, when she said, Our fathers worship in this mountain, but you Jews say, Worship at Jerusalem. He said, The hour is coming, and now is when the true worshipers must worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. There is much worship going on in the religious world today that is not in spirit and in truth. The hour cometh, and now is, Jesus said, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship Him. John 4, 23. Worship services with such elements as singing, prayer, Bible study, preaching, testimonies, the Lord's Supper, feet washing. That's the kind of services the early morning church had, and that's the kind of services we should have yet today. Where there is singing, where there is prayer, where there is Bible study, where there is preaching, where there is testimonies, and from time to time the observing of the Lord's Supper and feet washing. Yes, that's a part of the gospel. That's part of what Jesus taught His disciples to teach the nations. Now, the work of the congregation will be similar to that found in the New Testament. We are to edify one another. We are praying for one another. We help one another in time of need. And we are out endeavoring to win souls for Christ, supporting the church, supporting the gospel, with our tithes and our offerings. Yes, we need to be careful where 
we pay our tithes and our offerings. I know there's a lot of preachers on the TV and on the, the radio. They want you to believe that they are their radio pastor, and they want you to send them their tithes and offerings, and some of them make you believe that if you will, you'll get more than what you give to them, and so on and so forth. Religious cracks, if you cracks, if I may say so, and deceivers in many respects. We need to be careful where we pay our tithes and where we give our offerings. You don't go to one grocery store to get your groceries and go to another grocery store and pay the bill. You pay the store where you get your groceries. And if you are worshiping with a congregation of God's people, there's where your tithes belongs. Yes, there is where your tithes belong, because that's where you get your food. Bring your tithes into the storehouse, that there may be money in my treasury to pay my bills. Now, I'm paraphrasing my Malachi's words, but that is the thought there in Malachi. So, we are to support the gospel. Make sure that it is the gospel. Spiritual offices. We find in God's church those who have spiritual gifts. And only those who have spiritual gifts are qualified to fill these offices. You don't go to some theological seminary and there get the gift of preaching. The gift of preaching that is in God's church is given by the Spirit. So we have in the body of Christ, we have elders, we have pastors, we have shepherds, and we have deacons and we have teachers. And all of them are there because God has given them a gift. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 12, that God places the members in the body as it pleases Him. In God's church, you don't vote in pastors and vote out pastors. We, Paul said in Acts 20 and 28, which I've already referred to, that the Holy Ghost makes the overseers. So we have in the body of Christ pastors, and teachers, and deacons, and other officers who are given gifts, thus qualifying them to fill a given office. And finally, we should seek a place where righteousness, peace, and joy is found. The grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Titus 2, 11 and 12. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect, be of good comfort, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. Second Corinthians thirteen eleven. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Romans 14, 17. The true measure of a strong church is not how many programs they have, nor is the measure of a true spiritual church how many church activities they are involved in, but if they worship in spirit and in truth, in looking for a church, do not look for numbers, do not look for programs, look for a people who are doers of the Word. Heavenly Father, I pray you'll bless these thoughts to our precious congregation today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It's been a privilege to share another Way of Truth broadcast with you. We do trust that it has proven to be a blessing. It would be an encouragement to us if you'd take time to write to us and let us know that you hear and appreciate our broadcast. And our mailing address is the Way of Truth broadcast. Post Office Box 88, Hagerstown, Maryland, 21741, USA. Our email address is truth at fred.net, and our webpage address is www.wayoftruth.org, www.wayoftruth.org. And our postal address again, the Way of Truth broadcast, Post Office Box 88, Hagerstown, Maryland, 21741, USA. And now this is Alvin A. Craig 
We invite you to tune in this station next week when again, the Lord willing, we'll be coming your way with another Way of Truth broadcast.